he he wrote a book that was published for Desiree Book before he uh, came out um, with with who he was, and so uh, you know they he talked about how there's a that Deseret Book would be in a predicament with this. What are they going to do? Are they going to ban the book? Are they going to keep it going? And so he said that he met with the president of Deseret Book and requested that his books uh, be removed. So he kind of went on the offense to make them supposedly feel better about uh, removing it. So they, so the Deseret Book wasn't in a tough position. Um, and they met his request. They did remove it. And um, that almost sounds like a this almost sounds like a PR move. Right. To maybe and because sell right more here they said books. To sell because more that's what they did. Without the mask. Oh, there it is. His memoir. Yeah. You know, because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change. And that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change and it should change. Um, and again, I, I don't think it should exist. Um, and um, he came out on Twitter with several different um, uh, posts talking about how we have to redefine the proclamation on the family so that way we don't have to get rid of it we can just say how the proclamation supports those with natu- unnatural affection those that uh, don't believe you know that their gender uh, changed from what they were before to what they what it is now I know everybody knows that you can't stop the too long have to keep on don't really know where the world is gonna go I know everybody knows all right Benny boy Benny and the Jets boom Boom, Benny. boom, okay. Boom, bum, 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 bum. They're going to copyright me now. Cause I, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it sounded exactly like, like it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Which Ways Up. Uh, I am your host. This is my co host, Ben McClintock. I am Troy. This is also The Last Dispensation. This is a playlist on The Last Dispensation. What are we talking about today, Ben? I thought it was interesting. There was a Deseret News article, and, you know, I think it's a uh, previous uh, show that we did. We talked about the Tribune doing a poll and whatnot. And so people rightly pointed out that the Tribune has been anti-Mormon since the very beginning. And that's uh, very true. And But this one is from Deseret News. And so Deseret News, for those of you who don't, aren't aware, is owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so it something being on there kind of has a different light and um, you know, agenda maybe behind it, then you would, you know, then the Salt Lake Tribune would be anti-Mormon. So you can kind of dismiss it as that. But what about when Deseret News publishes something, I would say, very similar to what we talked about before of um, more and more people being uh, Latin, of Latter-day Saint um, persuasion, uh, accepting of unnatural affection, rights, and um, accepting of marriage and uh, things along those lines. And so the Tribune did an article, not the Tribune, Freudian slip, the Desert News. I'm glad you didn't say Vegemite. Thank you for <laughs> not saying Vegemite. Only because I'm not saying I don't agree with you, but let's still be there. There's still people. There's people involved in that. Right. But I understand your point. So I did read the article. You sent me the article. Yes, I sir. read it. And you're like, you read it, Troy? You really read it? You didn't just <laughs> holy cow. let me uh, feed you like a little baby bird? No, <laughs> I, I read the article. I'm not a big yeah. reader. Well, I'm a reader. I, I devour things that I'm interested in. But and what's what you don't give a crap. You don't read it. If you do, you read it really well. Well, this I had. OK, so you asked me the question off off camera. Why yeah. do you think the Deseret News does this? And I'm like, I don't, I don't have the answer. I don't think you have the answer. I know that age, I said agency, you laughed. And I, I think that many people agree with you. I, I think that we are getting to the point where there's a lot of, there's more political and governmental red tape and bureaucracy involved in things. And what would you call that in, in, I don't know government in the private business. I really believe that. And I think that it's getting to the point where uh, even the brethren's hands are tied in certain areas there. They are. I, I, I firmly believe that they're constantly praying and, and, and trying to figure out how to assess a lot of these problems. But anyway, let's go ahead and read. This is, if you remember um, Charlie bird, for those of you that aren't aware, he is the, 
what was he? He was the mascot at BYU. He came out and got married. Not that they shouldn't get married, but they can't. It's that marriage is man and woman. That is the definition of marriage. Um, but he came out and he, there was another show that we did together where it talks about how they have a calling in their ward and they're active and all of that kind of stuff. And so he writes a, uh, opinion piece, uh, for the, uh, Deseret news. So it's not like a letter to the editor. This is the editorial department saying, you know, we are publishing this as the opinion of Deseret news. And so. Um, they asked him to write this opinion for the Deseret News. Before you get the, started, must, uh, before yeah. you start reading, I just want to comment on what you said about marriage. It's interesting you say that because I live in California, Prop 8, I think that was 2000, was that 2006? I can't remember. Prop 8, no, no, no. I, I still lived in California at the time. That was like what? 2001, 2002, okay. somewhere in there. So it was the early 2000s. We got to this point now where we're like, you hear more Latter-day Saints saying, I don't care if they get married outside, you know, whatever they do outside of the church is fine. You hear a lot of right. that, right? Right, right. But then you wonder, is this something that it, they're they're saying because they've decided to give in? Because at one time we didn't, we, we petitioned we against care. this. <laughs> we petitioned right. against this, especially in California. To say that, oh, well, we're 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 doing this because we've realized that we might be wrong and that people should be allowed to get married and so we're going to change the definition of marriage right so that's the question are we placating or are we uh coming to some uh fruition in our in our psyche and in our our minds and our spirits that that this is something that should be done that's that's the weird thing if you know what i'm saying well, I think it opens up a lot of things that we're seeing in a lot of different places, right? You, you have the um, governmental definition of marriage changing, um, but then also like in states like Utah, for example, it is now legal. It is part of state statute. I don't, I shouldn't say legal. It is part of state statute that says that you can change your gender and your sex on your birth certificate. So you are legally whatever gender or and sex that you want to be so and i'm and i'm using both those because the propagandists have been out there saying that there's a difference between gender and sex mm -hmm. and that sex is biological and gender is you know whatever the society at large says right but the statute says that you can change your your sex and so they're they're saying that sex and gender now is just societal. wait that's in utah in utah that's a, correct yeah that see utah. The, so then that then it, I think it's so what I'm saying is it's it's normal to wonder, are we just giving in or, you know, and disguising it like, well, we've come to terms with the, uh, the, the these ideas that maybe we were wrong. No, I really think it's just we're losing a battle and people are just going along with it now. We're capitulating and it's become capitulating. That's the, that's exactly. The that's that's yeah. the question. I think it's a good point. Um, so going back here, we must find uncommon common ground. Being gay and religious cannot become an oxymoron. And so um, he, talk, he just goes, kind of goes through and tells his story um, about the ways to he um, work. He was part of a working group with the task to identify ways to improve campus environment for those with unnatural affection within the existing policies and expectations of a religious university. So again, their his job official it was part of a official program to make this more normal on the campus under the guise, right? This goes back to the BYU professor um that about a year or two ago, I, I can't remember how long ago it's been now, he came out on Twitter with several different um uh posts talking about how we have to redefine the proclamation on the family. So that way we don't have to get rid of it. We can just say how the proclamation supports those with natural, unnatural affection, those that uh, don't believe, you know, that their gender uh, changed from what they were before to what they, what it is now. And so that's exactly what, what this working group um, was a part of doing was making that normalized on campus. 
It consisted of both students and university administrators, and we all had different orientations, identities, priorities, and experiences, and the disagreements were were uh, frequent. Uh, but he came to a view as one of the most important things he had ever done, and um, it, it talked about uh, building a valuable skill of building relationships. Um, he says, in the years since, I've observed American politics, even pattern, often pattern after those of some of those same complex issues, conversations surrounding the civil rights. All right, that's just bogus. It's supremacy. That's just all there is to it. It's supremacy. It's not rights. Right. And religious freedom have recently been at the forefront. Last December, Congress passed the Respect for Marriage Act, which was uh, also backed by the uh, church organization. Organization. This was rightly heralded as a landmark stride in bipartisan legislation. Well, because what it did was is it protected institutions while removing rights of individuals. And I was pleased to see my church actively support this legislation. The legislation alone won't solve the political pol polarization. And that's something that they work heavily on is changing the culture. You can't make political changes without social changes first. Well, and when I say um, I talk to my my friend who has left the church and he's mm -hmm. more woke now, but he he's left because of uh, the, you know, on that side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And he tells me almost guy was raised in the church. You're going to be shocked that I don't want to accept things that he and I were raised completely on the opposite end of the spectrum that they're saying today that should right. be changed. In other words, you're raised a certain way all your life in the gospel. And then you believe things because the scriptures tell you. So then all of a sudden you have to do a, a 180. You have to completely do like you, you have to go through this cognitive dissonance from hell. And, it, and, and because you're not accepting it immediately, uh, there's something wrong with you. Especially when 1.2 to 6% of the population, and I'm using statistics, are LGBTQ or homosexual, but that we have to change the definition of all of this for, for that small percentage. Well, the, the, the next generation is getting much higher. BYU is almost 20%. And so the population at large, we're getting in about 20 to 25% of the population is identifying in one of these unnatural um, uh, identities. Right. And, and, and just the fact that I don't, that this per, well, go ahead, go ahead. I'll get to it. Sorry. Well, I think it's important. Yeah. It's because we are the world around us, right? It's that boiling frog. We become, you know, we, we, we say, oh, you, you're an extremist. That would never happen to, you know, to who cares if it happens or not to, of course it happened. It's right. And so you, you have this, this gradual shift from ab abhorrence to supremacy and 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 to not accept it is to is to stay firm and unchanging where the world around us is saying that we were wrong before and so do we have to accept that god was wrong and that we were wrong in our you know or that the world is ahead of the curve and eventually we will adopt all of the ways of the world well their argument is that a lot of men in the in the days of the Bible spoke culturally that that was not culturally acceptable. So they added their added that to the gospel, that that was a, a sin. That is Just, the argument that is made. Correct. Right. And, or women speaking in churches too, that women aren't allowed to speak. You hear, you know, who is that? Paul mm -hmm. said that. Um, oh yeah. But no, you go back to, Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, I mean, I'm, we're not getting the, the point I'm making here though, is that the attitude of Charlie and others is I, I don't have to change. You have to change. God has to change. Right. Uh, do, do you know what I mean? No longer, uh, the miracle yeah. of forgiveness that that's even banned. That's like one of my favorite books I read as a teenager. And I was shocked to find out that it's can't buy it at Desert Book anymore. It triggers people. I'm like, really? No, it 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 scared the crap out of me when I was a kid and made me do what's right. But I also felt the love of God. And there's a fine line between love and chastisement. You know, 
What happened to the term tough love? I don't think there is. God says that he chastens whom he loves. Right. And we used to say that is love. Well, we used to use the term tough love. What is tough love? Yeah. Making you do something that you don't want to do or discipline. You know, no, I don't have to change for this church. I don't have to change for you that all let forget the theology. All of you that have been raised a certain way and believe a certain way, you have to conform to my ideals. And that's very self-centered. Right. Absolutely. He says that we must find more common ground. Discussions um around these rights and religious freedom are framed as us versus them. No, they're not. That's what they, they're they're making it us versus them. It is right versus wrong. As if religious people and those with unnatural affection are two entirely separate groups. However, researchers have found that nearly half of these adults in the United States identify as religious because they're changing, they are creating a God after their own making. Doctrine and Covenants section one talks about those in, in, individuals that um, reject these truths are making um, gods of themselves and their own after their own liking. And Let's read themselves. that. Can we read that real quick? All right, go. We go to verse 14 through 16. And the arm of the flesh shall be revealed, and the day cometh that they who will not hear the voice of the Lord, neither the voice of his servants, neither give heed to the words of the prophets and apostles, shall be cut off from among the people. For they have strayed from mine ordinances and have broken mine everlasting covenant, as Isaiah promises. They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every man walketh in his own way and after the image of his own God, whose image is in the likeness of the world and whose substance is that of an idol, which waxeth old and shall perish in Babylon, even Babylon the great, which shall fall. So this is exactly what we're seeing going on with this article. And because we are, uh, it is an image of his own God and the image of the likeness of the world. So we're big. When we adopt the world and it's, you know, we, we stray from what has been eternal, unchangeable truths and saying that we were wrong, that now we have to be like the world. We are making it these false idols after ourselves. That's so true. And I think that that's exactly what's going on here with, uh, with this Charlie bird, our, uh, letter. Cheer up, Charlie. <laughs> Uh, any, I, I know this doesn't surprise me. I know many of these individuals, including, uh, get so government married gay couples who value spirituality. I'm one of them. I recently announced my engagement and I have a personal goal to keep attending church. I can't imagine life without practicing my faith. So this is that cafeteria Mormon, or they call it cafeteria, you know, whatever religion you are, you get to pick and choose which parts of the gospel you want to apply cherry, and cherry say that pick. you are active. Cherry pick yeah. the uh, commandments you want to live, and the other ones throw them out. Well, I mean that's the that's the mindset of 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 the woke crowd and the LGBT crew to yeah. just kids in general. The Im- that's called <laughs> immaturity. You right. know, I agree with this, but I don't agree with this. Why? Because it's too hard. Anything difficult, anything that I have to change about myself. How dare you? imply that maybe what I am doing and believing could be uh, misguided, could be uh, right. could be wrong. Right. No. How and there's a portion you? of it too, is, is you have these, a lot of individuals I think are more intellectually honest is they just leave. They hate God and, and they just want to live their, you know, they just want to live according to the natural man where you have these individuals that are a part of a broader um, agenda of changing the culture, getting members of the church from within the culture to accept and adopt the the image of the world and the image of Babylon the Great. And so that's that to me is the more dangerous than the person that is openly um, opposing the gospel of Jesus Christ as opposed to those that pretend that they are compatible. Even good people can be agents to the devil and not know it. And yeah. what you do is we learn in the temple uh what are you doing i'm teaching these people the philosophies of men mingled with scripture and that's exactly what this is it's the philosophies of men mingled with scripture mm-hmm. there's a difference between inclusion um we want but 
Should we stop saying that, that Christ called people sinners? <laughs> is that term gone? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the whole agenda nowadays is that, you know, he, he didn't reject the adulterers and didn't stone her. They always say, you know, he who was without sin cast the first stone. Well, what did he say? He says, go and sin no more. They always leave that last part out because they want to uh, get people to accept evil as okay and good. Right. And if, if, if the apostles who walked with Christ didn't understand that, then why did Paul and all of those after continue in their epistles to, to condemn sin? <laughs> they did constantly. Right. Uh, and they walked with Christ. Sin is not, yeah, many will say that sin is hypocrisy. That is sin. Hypocrisy. That's what Christ meant for, by sin, right? right? No, no, that's one of the sins. <laughs> so here, here is his main point. He gets to is as a society, it's time for change. And of course, and then he tries to, to, to you know, if, if somebody says that, you know, they're the most honest person they know, then obviously, you know, I'm the most humble person I know. You have to be a little bit careful. So he's, I'm not advocating for structural or doctrinal changes. Baloney nor seeking for anyone to criticize or condemn my faith or anyone else's. Um, he says, I honor their agency, but I, and I don't want to be considered a standard uh, for anyone else. But even though we may not all see to eye to eye, we can interact with others in a better way. That's like the whole agenda of, you know, uh, disagree better. Religious communities can be protectors of religious freedom and create refuge for anyone who desires to worship Christ, regardless of orientation. So what did the Lord say? The Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say, do whatever you want. None of us can fight hate with hate. Hate I, with I, hate. Oh, my goodness. That is, okay. Yeah. Like I said, we're leaving out the, the neo-Marxist component. Talk to, golly, the, the LGBTQ agenda. First of all, they don't, okay, when I say traditional or the old school gay community, first of all, is at odds with the LGBTQ community because they've redefined what, the, what queer means. Um, it is a, a, it's a bandwagon that people are jumping on. Part of it is because of this neo Marxist agenda that's being pushed through the mainstream media. Um, my wife listens to a guy named James Lindsay who was on uh, not too long ago with uh, a, with We the People. Is that that radio yeah. station in um, Idaho and Utah? It's not in California. Mm -hmm. But there is, uh, like the church doesn't, I don't know. Okay, we're just leaving out that component. And then this sounds like activists. The reason I'm bringing that up is this is activist speech. This is activism right here. Yeah. None of us can fight hate it's, for it's, hate. It's propaganda. They're, they're saying if you have a standard that you stick to, that if you say that certain things are immoral and You're that hateful. they are wicked behavior that we should not be engaged in, then that is hate. Yeah. And that to defend yourself then is, is, is hate. And so um, it's, it, it's a miss. It's, it, is, it, it is activism, like you said, because they're, what, the, what he's doing is he's redefining terms. Well, Sticking to the scriptures is now hate. Right. And Elder Bird, his name's Bird, last name Bird. Yeah. Right. Charlie. Yep. Charlie. Charlie was, um, he went on a mission. Yep. Did, did he think that that was hate back then when he was, you know, going to people's homes and teaching them about keeping the commandments and, uh, a church you're raised in, you know, better than that. You know, you <laughs> know, you know that old couple that loves you so much does not hate you because they disagree with your lifestyle. Right, exactly. Yeah, you don't, I don't hate someone that's an adulterer. I want them to repent and to never do it again. And if they won't, they need to be separated from, you know, the, the scriptures, the doctrine and covenant specifically says that adulterers, if they do not repent, are cast out of the church. And so that, that's not hate. That is the Lord's standard that he has set. He, he wrote a book that was published for Desiree book before he uh, came out um, with, with who he was. 
And so, uh, he, you know, they, he talked about how there's a, that Deseret book would be in a predicament with this. What are they going to do? Are they going to ban the book? Or are they going to keep it going? And so he said that he met with the president of Deseret book and requested that his books uh, be removed. So he kind of went on the offense to make them supposedly feel better about uh, removing it. So they, so the Deseret book wasn't in a tough position. Um, and they met his request. They did remove it. And, um, that almost sounds like a this almost sounds like a PR move. Right. To maybe and because sell right more here they of said books. To sell because more that's what they did. Without the mask. Oh, there it is. His memoir. Yeah. So I, they what they did was they not only stopped selling it, but they gave him back the rights to the book. So then now he had, he can take his book and sell it anywhere they want instead of, you know, stopping it from being published and normalizing what he who he is. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you it wasn't selling very well there. And Probably so he's not. like, oh, his publicist is like, here's what you could do. You could go on the offense, go to De let's go to Deseret News, talk about you removing the book, and then we plug it there. He's basically plugging his book right here. Is that, that's what he's doing. Right. So he says, in order to preserve our relationships, our communities, and our republic, we must reinvest in the principles that unite us, peace, compromise, and a more perfect union. So this is right here is again double speak. So peace at any price, that's communism. Compromise meaning you give up your principles and a more perfect union. So if you don't accept this, you are full of hate and you are causing division. And so you need to come over here and you know, we'll give some cover to to institutions, but we are going to make sure that um individuals are not allowed to have freedom of association. And it that sounds will like neo marxism more to me. That's exactly what it is. And so this is the article. This is published in the uh, Deseret News, which has the same owner as Deseret Book. And so it's, you know, it's to me, it's um, like you said, it's obviously a PR move because he's saying he doesn't want to put Deseret Book in a position, but now he's promoting the book and promoting the same ideology through the uh, another publication arm of the same institution. And so it's it's very disingenuous, and it's clear the agenda is to move us towards normalizing and and bringing in um, behavior as acceptable behavior that the scriptures have said consistently for thousands of years is unacceptable, and not only unacceptable but damnable. Well, and and James Lindsay, I want I hope to have him on someday, but he talks about this not being about the LGBTQ plus agenda is the it's it's no different from black lives blm uh black lives matter right. uh it's not about uh sexuality it's about uh creating a conflict a division between traditionalists and non-traditionalists and right yeah it's it's a divide and conquer mechanism Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. I think it's important that they that they're dishonest. I was trying to look for a video, but there is a another activist um, in this community that says talked about marriage and how they lied about marriage, how it was just a. And she admitted. She says, "Do I like that we lied about it?" She says, "No, but we have to lie about it to be able to bring about um, our bigger agenda." And so, when these people are claiming one thing, we we have to understand that there is a larger agenda, and that their activists behind when they're speaking to each other are admitting that they're lying about it. Um, I, um, I mean, I agree. It's a no-brainer that, uh, that we should have the right to marry. But uh, I also think equally that it's a no-brainer that the institution of marriage should not exist. So, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that causes my brain some trouble. Uh, and, um, and part of it, why it causes me trouble is because uh, fighting for gay marriage generally involves lying about what we're going to do with marriage when we get there. You know, because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change. And that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change and it should change. Um, and again, I, I don't think it should exist. Um, and um, I don't like uh, taking part in, in creating fictions about, about my life. That's sort of not what I had in mind when I came out 30 years ago. But they don't ex think that it should even exist. And so they had to lie about they wanted to create marriage, call it marriage, to be able to destroy marriage. 
That was yeah. what they knew that they were doing. And so they're lying when they, and so now they've done, they've been able to do it on the political landscape. Now they're trying to do it on the religious landscape. That is the agenda behind what is behind what Charlie Bird wrote, whether he knows it or not. Right. Yeah. And uh, I brought up James Lindsay. He talks about, he, he talks about this very thing. He talks about, uh, about the Marxist aim to undermine societal norms. Like I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. ab about uh, drag queens. Am I going to get removed for saying that? Suggesting that so. they make themselves like deliberately make themselves targets. Right. And they do to provoke not all, but there are <laughs> what happens when you, when you get in somebody's face, basic virtually in their face, provoke reactions and create. Right a type of unrest. Uh, you know, the thing, same thing that was going on with BLM, just the activism and, and the George Floyd thing, you know, creating, this is creating division and undermining traditionalism. Yep. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. Good to be with you again. Yeah, you too.